We have done significant amount of discussion on the simple shear zone and we found it is not at all simple. Now we are going to see another kind of shear zone ideally which is known as the pure shear. Pure shear. It is a process of deformation and the shear zone where there is a movement of the boundary perpendicular to itself can be called as a pure shear zone. Imagine there is a fluid present and there is a horizontal channel or the shear zone boundary, the bottom boundary static, top one is pushed perpendicular to its length, then the material here naturally will be squeezed and will be flowing out in these two directions. So we call in structural geology such deformation as pure shear. So this is one extreme of deformation, there is another extreme that we have talked as simple shear where the boundary moves parallel to itself or both boundary static and possibly flow takes place. In reality the shear zones are neither completely pure shear nor completely simple shear but a combination works and this has been found through the KVN studies that not only there is a compression perpendicular to the boundary but there is also boundary parallel movement. So in reality what we known as what we call as a sub simple shear zone. Also we can call it as a general shear zone. What happens? Not only there is a compression but also there is a shear. Now if both the components are working on the shear zone that means effectively this is the applied direction of force or stress. In other words if this is the applied direction of force or stress on the wall which is at an acute angle with the wall then it can be resolved into a normal component leading to the pure shear and a slip parallel to the boundary leading to simple shear. So I have shown the pure shear here in terms of a compression just to keep in mind that it can also be possible that there is an extension happening both the boundaries are compressed at different velocities or the bottom boundary is compressed top boundary static or you can think that the bottom boundary is pulled down and the top boundary is static. In the structural geology textbooks it is shown that the pure shear zones are always horizontal but in reality they can also be very much inclined. So if now I apply the extensional stress either of these arrows that will be giving leading to a pure shear deformation within it. A compression such as pure shear leads to squeezing of the material and in some of the mechanics books this has been talked in terms of squeezing flow. And the mathematical model built up for pure shear is completely different for that of simple shear. We have to quantify it in terms of equation. Once that is done we can start doing the strain analysis. Now suppose I take a pure shear zone here and I take two markers here as AB and CD. Now I apply a compression. Let us understand qualitatively first what happens then we go into equations. Due to this compression AC will come to this line A dash C dash. We are considering an it's even compression not an uneven compression. The A to A dash distance is same as C to C dash distance. So all these points actually have undergone equal amount of slip. This is again an assumption there can be geological case where this is not happening. For example, this is a shear zone, this part is more compressed, this part is less compressed shown by the two different arrow sizes. And if that is the case, this point will be down further, this point will come less down. So the result would be something like this, point A has come to A dash, point B has come to B dash. Such pure shear is possible in a sedimentary basin, imagine at some place more sediment is accumulating and at some other place less sediment influx is there. So due to differential accumulation of the sediment, 
it is possible that one part is getting more compacted and another part is getting less compacted. Okay, now we are back to our problem. A comes to A dash and C comes to C dash. And in this case, what happens to the AB and the CD lines? This AB line is going to be folded. Point A has come to A dash, the line length, suppose it is maintained the same, then it can attain this parabolic geometry. Only if the material here is Newtonian viscous. What is a Newtonian material where the applied stress is proportional to strain rate? If it is non-Newtonian, this profile will not be parabolic and this can be proved by very detailed deduction. Similarly, the CD length that gets compressed and to maintain the same length, this becomes the parabolic profile if this material, the starting material was Newtonian viscous. So, what I mean by this, if the line length is maintained constant, then the AB length, straight length is equal to A dash B curve length and the CD length is equal to C dash D the curve length. Now, after some more time, A dash will come to A double dash and C dash will come to C double dash. A dash will come to A double dash, C dash will come to C double dash. So, the A dash C dash line which was earlier A C line has now become A double dash C double dash line. What will happen? As this curve is more compressed, we are expecting a more tapered parabola here and a more tapered parabola over there. And this process will continue ideally, no harm in thinking that the more and more compression is happening and the material is spreading laterally. If the compression is vertical, if the AC is a horizontal line, then the spread of material will be horizontal. Horizontal spread in this side and same thing the horizontal spread HS will also happen in that direction. Now interestingly the material points flow due to such pure shear will not be straight line. If we run a laboratory experiment then it can be seen that instead of straight line movement the material points are maintaining a hyperbolic path. What do I mean by that? Say this is a rigid boundary and we have pushed the top boundary then we can and this line has come over here then it can be seen that the material flow is happening in this manner. So, it is a hyperbolic path and again that can be proved. Since it is a hyperbolic path, non-linear path, vector addition will be difficult. In our previous year example, if you remember how the vector addition was done, say this is a marker and there is a slip and we have given also a Poiseuille flow. What is the resultant profile if this question was asked? Our resultant profile in that case was obtained in this way and how it was done like this green line moves to this yellow parabolic profile. So, basically this white point does not move whereas if this green line, the straight line coet flow indicates this point comes here. So, the combination of Poiseuille flow and the linear movement, this is the resultant position of the point. Keep doing that for all the points and we come back with a parabolic profile. So, here vector addition was done for all these material points, channel flow, how much is the movement and then the coet flow, how much is the movement, they were added vectorially. That will not be possible here because the flow path is in a curvilinear manner. So, as we see again if we go back here, the vertex of the parabola with time keeps shifting. This is the vertex of the parabola and as more and more compression goes on, it keeps shifting. And we see that the vertex here, let us say point V and if I go back to this point as V dash, but I must draw a new sketch that will be confusing now. Suppose a compression has been made and the parabolas are produced, then this vertex V 
and if I track it by a line parallel to the base over here as V1, this point is our A dash, this point was our B, this point was A and here if the vertex is V dash and if I draw a line parallel to the base and passing through this V dash point and it meets the initial orientation of the line at V2 and remember this point was our C dash, this point was C, this point was D. In such a configuration, we can see that A dash V1 distance is equal to V1 B distance. I mean to say that these two distances are equal. The vertex is equidistant from the walls at that position. Same thing happens here, C dash V2 distance is equal to the V2 D distance. Now in the next instant, when more compression happens, a dash C dash has come to A double dash C double dash and then the parabolic profile goes like this. In that case, the V let us say star, the V star point is equidistant from the two walls and that is always being maintained. At every instant when the walls are being compressed, the vertex of the displacement profile, we can call this as the displacement profile. The parabolas become more and more tapering and the vertex is always equidistant from the two walls. These are the qualitative things. One more thing is interesting to watch that when you apply pure shear, let us say a Newtonian viscous material and running the experiment in the laboratory. And suppose I have drawn several marker lines before undertaking the deformation. Each of these marker lines behave differently. This AB comes to this point, this line as A dash B dash. Then this yellow line, now it becomes green by drawing this, becomes a tapered parabola. The next yellow line will become a less tapered parabola. The next yellow line becomes much less tapered. At this side what happens? A tapered parabola and with a relationship that this distance is equal to this distance. Then, then take the next yellow line, this line a less tapered parabola but these two distances are same. Then take the third one a further less tapered parabola with these two distances are same. By doing this we come finally to a marker line this one PQ drawn in such a manner that the AP distance equal to the PB distance and the MQ distance is equal to the QT distance. I mean to say that this distance and this distance are equal, this distance and this distance are equal. That means the PQ line actually bisects the AB length. or the empty length. For such a line, as more and more compression is going on, that line is not altered to any parabola. That line only reduces its length. So this can be demonstrated in the laboratory experiment. And right now I am going to do some quantification of this deformation mechanism. From there I will be talking about the how to find out the shear strain from the pure shear zone. I have already discussed the basic information about pure shear with that now we are moving into quantification of the pure shear deformation. Let us consider the x axis and this boundary is rigid. So I have shown these lines, this boundary is not moving and I have considered a piece of material A, B, C, D which is Newtonian viscous and kept in the left hand side of the y axis. Now, a velocity v is applied so that the dA line after some time comes to d dash a dash position. Consider this length is y0 unit. So, if the b which is the intersection point between x and y axis is origin 0 0 then the a point has to have a coordinate 0 comma y0 so that this is y0 unit. Consider the ad length or the bc length is equal to l unit. 
Now, if that is so that this is 0 comma y 0, this length is L unit, then the d coordinate is minus L comma minus y 0 and this coordinate will be minus L comma 0. So, the coordinates of A, B, C, D are given. Now, due to this compression with a constant velocity v, assume that the AD line after some time has come to A dash D dash position. So, what is the coordinate of A dash and D dash we can work out? After time t due to velocity v, total distance covered by d a line will be v multiplied by t. So, this distance is going to be v multiplied by t unit. The total length is y 0 unit. So, y 0 minus v t will be the y ordinate of the a dash coordinate. So, a dash is 0 comma y 0 minus v t. And we can also work out that this coordinate d dash will be minus l comma y 0 minus v t. Now, due to this compression there has been an area loss. This is the area that got lost and these are the areas produced in case of Newtonian viscous fluid. We will be having two parabolic profiles at two sides. Let us say this green parabola is P1, this parabola is P2. We are going to focus right now on the P1 parabola. Note that the P1 parabola passes through point B which is origin here 0, 0 and it also passes through A dash point which has a coordinate 0 comma y0 minus vt. Now in general we can write down under such situation the equation of the parabola as x equal to ay square plus by plus c. Now, since it passes through the center 0, 0, I can put x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 that leads to c equal to 0. So, this equation becomes x equal to a y square plus b y. Our aim is to find out the a and b parameters and if we can do then this parabolic profile equation can be found out which will be very interesting and more works can be done. Now, to find out the parabolic equation P1, in other words the A and B parameters in detail, I am trying to find out how much is the area bound by the parabola with the y axis. That will be given by 0 to y0 minus vt integration that means from 0 to y0 minus vt and x dy, x is equal to ay square plus by. So, I have written that and this is our say uh, one of the equations. Now, this a1 area can also be obtained in another way. How much is the area loss over here? That area has been equally distributed to two parabolas. So, the area loss due to compression, area loss due to compression or pure shear is equal to the area of the rectangle and I said that this length is L unit. So, L multiplied by, you see this is Vt v and t, lvt is the area loss. This area got equally distributed into the two parabolas. So, this portion, this area will be lvt divided by 2 unit, which I am writing here that the area is equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by lvt. So, now once this definite integral is ready, now we can expand it and integrate and put this 0 and etcetera and we can get an expression for the a1 area. That area will be equated with this area. From this equation 1 and 2, one will be able to write equation 3 and please note I am not writing on the board equation 3 at all. I am requesting the viewer to do it with pen and paper, find out equation 3. And also note that this parabolic curve passes through the point a dash. So, if that is the case, then put the value 0 comma y 0 minus v t into this and you will be getting an equation b equal to minus a multiplied by y 0 minus v t. So, we have now equation 3 and we have now equation 4. From these two equations, one has to find out the a and b parameters. Try to remember where are a and b in the equation here and here or in other words here and there. I am requesting the viewer to find out a and b and after that finally put those a and v, b values over there and you will get such a lengthy expression. So, this is the x ordinate has been obtained. That means, if I take different values of y 
different values of y means say y equal to some amount how much is the x amount this is the x amount can be obtained so the parabola has been characterized now this is the distance x distance has been plotted assume that there is a speed sx term i am calculating and here one has to be very careful when i say speed this is a different than the velocity profile and those concepts which we were doing what this with the simple shear case in the simple shear case things were bit simpler like a straight line moves to another becomes another straight line all material points move along straight line but as i told you here hyperbolic path is produced so this speed can be called as an just to tell you effective speed it does not mean that this point has traveled straight so i am not using the word velocity there is some curving path of the movement and it's just a sort of effective speed we can think sx is equal to x the displacement divided by the time t here we are getting the time t t parameter so if i do x by t sx can be obtained and an another expression can be written i will request the viewer to write it down and from this quadratic equation you find out the coordinate of the vertex the vertex is here you will find out that the vertex is equidistant from this green and this orange boundary accordingly also we have drawn the diagram now one cross checking can be done whether this derivation or that derivation went well as per my diagram at 0 0 point the velocity is the speed is zero and so also here at this point this coordinate is 0 0 and that coordinate is this one so for a 0 comma y 0 this point no this will be change for a dash 0 a dash 0 then which is 0 comma y minus vt y0 minus vt i write this clearly here y0 minus vt and comma 0 and this is the coordinate of a dash put these values over here in this side you will find that if you put a dash has a coordinate 0 comma y0 minus vt so if i put the y ordinate y0 minus vt in this expression i will find that the x is turning to be 0 similarly if i take the y0 coordinate as the y ordinate as 0 and plot here and put here we will find that the velocity here is 0 which means what we have derived is logically correct so in this way the profile has been drawn and as you keep on compressing at with changing time t equal to something you can keep on thinking keep on putting t values you will be able to simulate the progressively changing parabola initially it was like this starting from this compression and then more compression happened it became more tapered parabola so with time how the parabola is changing can be demonstrated from this equation so here on what we can talk about the strain related issue now let's look at the shear strain issue in the pure shear zone this is the parabolic profile created at two sides let's say this is p1 parabola and that is p2 parabola let's focus for the time being on the p1 parabola let's take any point on this parabola i can draw a tiny tangent here where this point was before deformation no it was not here it has not come straight away this point was somewhere here so i can draw a tiny tangent there we can see that the tiny tangent has undergone a rotation how much is the rotation i can extend these lines and i can find out the angle so this much the line was oriented like this and then now the line has tilted like that so this is the psi what about the tangent at the vertex if i draw a tangent at the vertex this point has not undergone any rotational movement so far the tangent is concerned if this point was somewhere there on the line then the tangent on the line will be the line itself so this line has not undergone any rotation and what about any point over here close to the boundary if i draw a tangent i can see that this tangent is making more angle with the initial position with the initial position of the tangent so what i understand is that in this pure shear zone these are the orientation of the walls at this moment in the middle there is no shear strain 
and in this side progressively the shear strain is increasing psi increases so if i draw a diagram if i draw a cross section here let's say this line i call as mn line mn is drawn here now i draw here the psi value in between n and m and n such some midpoint the projection of the vertex can come this is a vertex whose projection is here v dash so starting from here the with with some relation uh, relationship it will the shear strain will fall and at v dash the shear strain is zero it will further again keep on increasing the exact nature of the curve can be worked out from the equation so what we see is that in case of a pure shear zone there also in the middle the shear strain is minimum this was the same thing we have seen for a simple shear zone just to recollect a textbook example of snc fabric and you can keep on drawing tangents and you can draw the mn line and what will be observed there that the shear strain falls and then again moves up but in the middle it is not zero ideally what happens in case of a poissoli flow take a case of flow from left towards right hand side direction this is the parabolic profile keep on drawing tangents and what we understand is that if this is a main line then the shear strain falls and then it again moves up so this is a common thing in a pure shear zone in a simple shear zone with a perfectly coherent flow in a simple shear zone with a perfectly poissoli flow that the at the boundaries with the kind of definition i am using here for the boundaries so at these boundaries the shear strain is maximum and the middle of the shear zone the shear strain is minimum so just by the information where the shear uh, strain is maximum where the shear uh, strain is minimum you cannot comment that this shear zone has undergone simple shear pure shear or a poissoli flow now we are going to see further if this compression continues it will be interesting and commonly understood that this white line now will come over here so at this position what is happening is at this position at time t2 this was for say time t1 at time t2 where is the center of the shear zone now it is over here so what has happened from t1 to t2 the place which was a place of minimum shear for t1 time is not the place of minimum shear for the t2 time this becomes very interesting and makes things very complicated with time the center of the shear zone is changing its position and the place in the shear zone where the coordinate within the shear zone where the shear strain was maximum or minimum they are also changing with time this is an important thing and has to be remembered